All right, we're here at the 2024 PGA Show. Adam Rayburn from Bridgestone Golf. Yes. We've got a lot of exciting stuff going on with Bridgestone this year, mm -hmm. and golf balls are hopping, man. We've That's got some right. new technology, really exciting stuff from you yeah. guys coming in some brand new tech in the Tour B Series golf balls. Yep. Uh, not only in the actual ball itself, but we got some stuff on the outside, the outside of the ball to talk yes, about. Absolutely. So uh, a little everything, but let's start with brand new Tour B Series balls, right. and let's start with new tech. There's yes. a new cover, new mantle layer. We mm -hmm. got some new stuff going on performance-wise. It's really right. going to help improve the golf ball. What do we got going on uh, with these new covers yeah. and these new parts of the golf ball? So we're excited to launch the new Tour B Series, yep. which features the X and XS for swing speeds that are over 105, and then the RX and RXS for the swing speeds under 105. A little softer core design with those golf balls. Still that ball fitting story. But we're super excited to launch the inside the golf ball technology, as you mentioned, the Reactive X system. Yep. So the Reactive X system is, is kind of like an equation of the cover and the mid layer working in tandem. So what's new this year is that mid layer, that accelerant mid layer, and it's a new mantle design that is more dense, so it adds a little bit more recoil off the tee for more distance off the tee. And then it acts as a better backboard or a firmer, denser mantle layer around the green, but we don't want to make it clicky, right? We don't like that yeah. clicky, chippy sound. <laughs> so we worked with the density and the way the material was made from a, a denseness to give it audible feedback that isn't as clicky. So you get a little bit more spin around the greens with it, and then a little bit more recoil off the tee for a little bit more distance. So the reactive IQ cover is still there, and it works in tandem with the accelerant mid layer for the Reactive X system. Yep, it's still urethane. Yes. We're not moving to anything else, still oh, high yeah, yeah. end, yep. premium urethane. Mm -hmm. You just kind of add some secret sauce exactly. into it to get it to perform the way you're looking for. Yeah, we're still a rubber and polymer company. We yeah. still think that there is innovation in the golf ball. A lot of companies may think we've reached that limit of, oh, we need to market better and do some gimmicky things, but we still work with the materials. We're a polymer company, obviously Bridgestone Golf. We get materials from Firestone that we put inside this golf ball. So we're excited to continue to innovate with our engineers and our R&D team. Yep, and then also too, with these kind of like, like you said, kind of this new mantle, working mm -hmm. with this new cover, you're able to kind of isolate spin between short game shots oh, and yeah. long game spin. Yeah. So what are you kind of seeing? You're getting more spin on the, on the wedges and the yep. short irons, less spin on the driver and, you know, top end of the bag. Yeah, that slope. You want to continue to stretch that slope. Used to back in the early 2000s and late 90s, if you wanted more spin, you'd get more greenside spin, but then you would also get more driver spin. Yeah. So what you're trying to do now is stretch that slope to where you have that lot of spin around the green, but then driver spin real low. And we know two drivers have gotten really well and moving MOI and all that good stuff to make the spin go down. So we have to adjust the golf ball too to all those trends and differences that goes on with the rest of the clubs. So. Stretching that limit is what we're trying to do to where we get like the holy grail of lots of ball speed and low spin off the tee and then a lot of spin around the greens and control. Yep. And then also like you guys have always, you know, really stressed is ball fitting. Yes. Uh, yep. Kind of talk about the difference, differences between uh, X and XS. Oh yeah. So these two golf balls are designed for two different demographics that are of that faster swing speed. So the X is has good spin around the greens, but it has a little bit more ball speed and a little bit more distance off the tee. It's a little bit more pop oriented, as Tiger says. He likes the <laughs> pop now with the X. He always used to be a spin yeah, guy. I was about to say he was always an yeah, XS player. exactly. So now if you play the XS, it does have a lot of greenside spin, a lot of chew on those wedge shots, and a lot of people need more spin, but then they also need um, more spin off the driver. It has a little bit more spin off the driver. So it's that difference of, hey, do I want to stop it around the green or do I maybe want to yoke one back and have that <laughs> little sexy spin where it comes back to the hole? So the XS delivers a more spin and then the X is a little less spin for a little bit more flighty control. Yep, and then, you know, feel-wise, are they pretty similar? I know we, there's some other brands out there, they have a similar setup yeah. in terms of a higher spin, lower spin ball. Yeah. And usually one maybe is a little firmer or yeah, they're, yeah. they're audibly different. Are they pretty close or? Yeah, in, in feel-wise, as far as the compression, they're not that far apart. I would say our X in the in the grand scheme of the the environment of balls is not a firm feeling golf ball. Yeah. As you know, I said mentioned Tiger moved to the X and he hates a clicky sounding ball and he does not like an audible clicky or a firmer feeling golf ball. So he felt that X was in in the landscape, like I said, is not a firm feeling golf ball. So the X, though it is a little bit firmer than XS as far as compression, in in relevance to everyone else, like a 
Pro V1X or a Left Dash or, or a Chrome Soft X, it's a lower compression golf ball that feels a little bit different and doesn't give that harsh feedback. Yeah, um, and then we talk about, I mean, we talk about Tiger, just moved mm -hmm. into the X, mm -hmm. but another huge name in PGA Tour is Jason Day. Yes. And Jason Day had a huge influence on the outside of the golf ball. Yes. So there's an option if you uh, you know want to try it, which is pretty got a really interesting story. Yes, absolutely. But we're calling it mindset. Yes. And it's probably the, one of the most different things you've ever seen on a golf ball, but it's got right. a great story. Yeah. So we've been working on this actually for about four or five years internally. You know, quiet eye, uh, focus zone. There was all these different code words we were using, and we were trying to. You know, obviously printed walls are very popular, yep. and but we wanted to enter into the printing space with an actual story, not just you know lines on the ball or, or a clear spot on the ball where you aim it. We wanted to kind of build something that had some visual technology. And so inside of this, for those four or six year, four to five years, we've been working on it, but over the last 18 to 24 months, bringing in Jason Day helped us kind of get it to the finish line, puts yeah. it into the end zone as, as the cliche says. <laughs> but um, what it's designed to do is give you three steps. And number one is this red circle here and yep. it's identified the target. And that's the things a lot of golfers maybe do already. You know, they get the distance, they're getting wind, slope, all those things. But then you move to the yellow, which is visualize your shot. Okay. And that's where a lot of times we may miss the boat a little bit. You may yeah. get the information, but visualizing your shot is saying, hey, I want to hit a little high cut to this back right pin, or I'm going to try to a soft draw, or I'm going to flight it down. And what Jason does, he actually closes his eyes and he's visualizing yeah. the shot in his mind. He's seeing himself like a movie hitting this shot. And some people may do that. Some people may do it as far as a feel mechanism of what they're going to do with the shot. Some see like a shot tracer of what it's going to yep. do. So once you do that one, you've gathered the data, you visualize the shot, and then you move to that last one, which is focus on the green dot to execute. Yep. You've set yourself up to hit the shot. You okay. visualize it, maybe put out all the bad thoughts and visualize a good shot. And then so then you, you know, some people put that green dot on top, some of them move it to the back, you know, on driver and then you execute the shot and you put yourself in the right mindset to hit a good shot. Yeah, so it's kind of like, you know, like you said with printed balls, we see a lot of alignment stories. Mm -hmm, sure. And, you know, we have multiple lines or mm -hmm. whatever. This is not necessarily made to just line it up at the hole right. on putts, yeah. but to be used basically from tee to green, yeah. you know, no matter what. Yeah, it's a, it's a mental cue for you to separate analytical thoughts from athletic performance. Because the last thing you want to do is be standing over that ball Oh, I got to take it out my wrist, and you know, by the time you get over the ball, those things should kind of leave you, kind of like a Kevin Costner. Remember the movie where he cleared the mechanism? Yep, clear. It's kind of that. <laughs> like once you get over the ball, you kind of want to, you want to get away from all those things. And if you did these first two steps, then you're able to get into it and free yourself up. Uh, Jason Goldsmith, which is Jason Day's yep. uh, performance coach, has helped us a lot with this too, and he uses that a lot. Freedom to perform. You want to. Yeah. Free yourself up to hit the shot. You don't want to be um, caged up with all those swing thoughts and the wind. You want to take care of that. And then when you get over the ball, it's execution time and, and free to, freedom to perform over that shot. Yeah, and there also is the kind of like a little red arrow system. So if sure. you wanted to utilize Absolutely. that as something to line up on the green, you still could. Yeah. But yeah, the big focus is almost uh, you know creating a pre-shot routine for exactly. a lot of us. Exactly. Because we don't. Yeah. I mean. I can admit I don't have a pre-shot routine Intention, or very yeah. minimal at best. Yeah, yeah. So having that reminder yeah, is, you, is a big thing. You, you certainly lose. I use this example because it happens to me a lot. We get to hole 11 or 12, maybe you're playing well, you get a little comfy, you start talking to your buddy about fantasy football or, or baseball, yeah. and then you just step into a drive and you, you wipe it OB and you're like, man, here I was playing a good round and I kind of lost it for that little bit of moment. Yep. I got too comfy or you get too aggravated or you get a phone call. So this is that reminder, that cue to kind of stay in that over your shot. Take that 15 seconds yep. and do the things you need to do and hit it. And then you talk about fantasy football once you've striped it down the middle. <laughs> yeah, back in the cart, you're good <laughs> yeah, exactly. to go. So no, it's pretty cool. You have the option. You can have it or not. Mindset is yep. available on, uh, it's available on all four. All four, uh, that's the correct. The options, yep. right? But you can get it without it, normal yep. blank ball, or you can get the mindset version. Awesome. So really kind of exciting stuff from Bridgestone Golf. Golf balls are such big pieces of tech now. Yes. It's really cool yes. to see. But uh, thank you for showing us yes. all the brand new tech. Excited to uh, hopefully get them on the course soon. Yeah.